So first, do you, you you guys all know sine and cosine, right? Why do we do that? Why do we have sine and cosine? If I draw a unit circle plane, unit circle plane. Oh, big mistake. Have you seen a unit circle like this? Why is it called a unit circle? Because the radius is what? One. One. Okay. Why is this special? Where does that sine cosine come from? They come from this unit circle, actually. So if you look at this angle here, if I label this as theta, and this is one, okay? So this distance, or this length here, divided by one is what? Still this length, right? Something divided by one is still itself. So that length here is basically what? This length here, divided by this one, is still the same, right? So the length here is basically what? Cosine what? Cosine theta, right? Okay? So if I have a bar starting from here, rotating, just think about so the sine wave and the cosine wave, the bar circling around that origin here uh, to form a unit circle, and that amplitude projected to the axis is the uh, amplitude of the sine cosine waves. And you stretch it uh, in the time domain, then you're getting a sine and cosine wave. Make sense? Let's go through this uh, really quick. So see here, here's the bar, right? If I start from the origin here, okay? Radius is one, right? And if you look from here, <clears throat> I'm drawing another uh, cosine plane, and this is T, for example, uh, even though I connect, it, connect them, but actually they are not in the same plane, right? Just keep that in your mind. This is the cosine theta, for example that axis, this is T. So at T0, I start grabbing this point and start rotating it counterclockwise. And then make it here. So here's theta, right? And what's the amplitude being projected to, you know, when we are looking at this direction, right? This direction. So the amplitude becomes this guy, right? Here's the length. And at the beginning, it was one, so it was one. And then when, when it starts rotating counterclockwise, it starts reducing or increasing. Reducing, there's no way you can be, make it bigger than one, right? So it's gonna reduce, start reducing, until what? <coughs> Zero, why? Because when this bar, this little bar here, rotates, when it reaches here, what's the amplitude in this dimension? when over overlaps with this bar, with this uh, axis. What's the dimension here? What's the length projected to here? See? This is the length, right? Rotating, 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 rotating. Mm. What's the length? Zero. So it becomes zero, okay? So what's the degree here? From here to here, what's the degree? How much degree? It has rotated. From here to here, how much degree? It's actually projecting to, to the x axis here, right? So this is, uh, originally it was here, and it starts reducing to here, and eventually it becomes zero. So what's the degree here? It sounds like a really weird definition. Why you have a degree, the angle here? The angle is projected, it's being stressed in the time domain, but basically this is the angle being represented by, oh, this is in the time domain, but you have a corresponding degree in the unit circle plane. It's 90 degrees, okay? So it's really confusing because when we are talking about signals, it's basically the time why we always talk about angles. That is why. Time is angle for sine and cosine waves. 
So then this guy starts rotating, keeps rotating. For example, it reaches here. What's the amplitude of the project to this axis? It's going to negative, right? It's going to negative. So it starts going here. Okay? So what is this wave? It's a cosine wave. It's a cosine wave. Any questions from here, since this is the foundation before we move forward? What's the confidence level? Let me do a survey. 10%. 20%. 50%. Sixty percent, eighty percent, okay, hundred <laughs> percent. All right, but can you see that the unit circle whenever this bar rotates, when this bar rotates like this, okay? So the amplitude, the amplitude, which is the uh, cosine theta, which is the amplitude, can be projected to this bar, to this axis. Is that clear? Okay, and that, that bar is basically sort of sine wave. You stretch it in the time domain, but actually what's happening is the amplitude is changing. If you don't stretch it in the time domain, just keep it in the same place, what's really happening? Just like, mm, 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 right? If you stretch it, it looks like a sine wave. If you don't stretch it, it's just like, mm, mm, just oscillating. Okay? That's how that works. All right? What about sine wave? Sound wave. It's just over here. It's just over here. What is this domain? Time. Okay, I just look at the projection to the y axis instead this time. Because sine theta, so the length here is what? What's the length here for the bar? Sine theta, right? Sine theta will be exactly the length of this, this thing projected to this y-axis. So basically, it's just an amplitude oscillating here, but to stretch it in the time domain becomes a sine wave. So eventually it becomes this. Okay? Cool. Do you agree with that? Um, if I this plane here. <clears throat> It's a still one, okay? So the amplitude, the length, the length here is one, okay? Fixed. Can I say cosine theta equals, um, oh, no, sorry. Sine theta equals cosine theta minus 90 degree. So sine theta is what? This one divided by here, right? It's basically the length here. What is cosine theta divided by uh, cosine theta? Cosine theta minus ninety. Degree. So this is theta minus ninety degree. It's basically here. Okay. So this is theta minus ninety degree, coming here. So this one um, cosine of this guy is the same as the sine of this guy. Ah, I didn't draw it really well. Let me do this. Okay. This is theta. Sine theta is this divided by this, which should be. What is this angle? Right? This is the right angle here. This is the right angle. So theta minus this is coming, it becoming a negative degree, negative angle here. So cosine. Sine theta, this divided by this, is the same as cosine theta minus 90 degree, which is this divided by this. They are both positive. This is positive because this is uh, the x -axis, axis, and this is also positive. It's uh, on the top of the zero here for the y. No, sorry. Not for the y, for the. Mm, it's just amplitude, anyway. So do you agree with that? Just remember this. You can convert between sine and cosine by doing this. But can I say cosine theta equals sine theta minus 90 degrees or no? Cosine theta. Cosine theta is what? Here, in here. Just look at this, cosine theta. So this is cosine theta. Is this length, right? 
Is that positive or negative? It's positive. So that's cosine theta. So sine theta minus 90 degrees is going to be here, theta minus 90 degrees, and sine of it. So which will be this length, right? Is this negative or positive? Negative. So I have to add a negative sign here, right? Okay, so they are not equal. They're opposite. But this is equal. Any questions by far? Good? Okay. Okay, so this is important constant number one, important constant number two. Let's move to the next. Another one. Euler's uh, equation. Euler's equation. <clears throat> e, it could be I, could be J, it doesn't matter. I just write it down here. I'll show you why, okay? How many of you have heard about this in the past? Most of you, okay? Where's this from? Where's this come from? I want to hear something. Where this comes from? I'm not deriving this for you. It's gonna take like 20 minutes, okay? Here, sorry for the writing. I did this like 10 years ago. Anyway, so it's just, it's called Taylor series. Okay, about this in Cog, Cog 1, Cog 2, Cog 3, whatever. Taylor series, right, Cog 2. Okay, no, nobody still remember what that is. I couldn't remember what that is as well. The teacher teaches it, I pass exam, and never come back. But now it comes, becomes useful. Euler's equation. So for EK, EK, this is just a constant, the 2.7 something, right? E to the k's power can be expanded in Taylor series like this. Okay? Cosine k can be expanded like this. And sine k can be expanded like this. However, if you merge them together, you can find out eventually e to the square root of minus 1k, that's where j comes from, okay? It's, become, it's making a lot of sense right now. So e to the power of uh, square root of negative 1 definitely doesn't, doesn't exist, right? You cannot do a square root of minus 1. However, it only works for this equation. You put it in there, you don't do the square root operation. You just put it in there. When you do a... Uh, uh, you know, square of this guy, you got a minus one. But we don't we don't do that. Just keep it in, in the square root. And then uh, this equals this. It's given, okay? Don't get confused. It's given. It's based on these calculations you can find here. And then we just replace because this looks confusing, right? Square root of negative one. We just replace it with J. It's imaginary, it doesn't exist. However, it makes sense for the calculation. Okay? That's where that comes from. Then we write it down like this. E to the j, k power, and equals cosine k plus j sine k. It comes from Taylor series. If you're interested, you can do it, but I don't believe so. <laughs> it's okay. This exists, okay? That's where that comes from. So now this is a, con this is a conclusion. I'm gonna come back and can do it. I'm not spending time on it. Okay? Here it is. Super important. Super, super important. <clears throat> this is from the calculation. Okay, it works. And <clears throat> there's a way that we can summarize all these different uh, calculations. I, I drew a diagram, but I'm going to just draw it for you. It will be good. Yeah. So, uh, it has to be theta for E, it's not just K. It has to be theta for K. K is just a, just a variable. Gotcha. Doesn't matter. For specifically, it was a question, it has to be theta for that? Yeah, theta is just a number. It can be anything. Yeah. And J is just exactly square root of negative one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't exist in the real world, but it's for the calculation only, right? So this is given, right? This is given from the Euler's equation. This is given. And if we add amplitude, <coughs> um, 
So this is the amplitude. It's just a constant times this thing. It's amplitude. And this one can be converted to A just directly adding a constant in front of it. Easy, right? Okay? And sometimes you'll see a number, a complex number, which is A plus BJ. Have you seen that before? Cosine theta, sin theta can be anything, right? You times A, you can form any numbers. It's just basically A is basically A times cosine theta. B is A times sin theta. Same stuff, you can convert back and forth. However, this from here, is that easy to do? From here to here, is that easy to do? How to find out A, how to find out B, if this, these are given? Hey, let me tell you. If I tell you a theta equals like 42 degrees, would you be able to know what cosine theta or cosine 58 degrees is? Calculators, right? <laughs> so if you know this, can you find out A? Yes, calculators. If you know this, can you find out B? Yes, calculators. But how do you calculate back? This is calculators, right? Be mind, it's super important. When we are working on Hong Nine, you'll find out sometimes they ask you from here to here. Okay, you'll recall what I said in the class. Oh, he said use calculators. <laughs> Don't forget you have calculators. You're staring at like cosine 52. He didn't teach us how to do it. You have to use calculators. So, what about going back? <clears throat> Arc cosine? It doesn't work. Why? So sine theta, let me show you. So does, it's called inverse function, right? So sine theta is this. Do you have an inverse function for sine theta or not, or not, or not? So this is a function because one point has one y, one x has one y, that's called a function. Function has to be one to one, right? If you do this, one y has how many x? Just for one period, I already got two x. Is it a function? So sine theta doesn't have an inverse function. If you only have like half period, oh, half period, you still don't have a function because they have two points. One x has two y's. It's not a function. Did you learn this concept somewhere else? So the function has to be one to one, right? Function has to be one to one. So for sin x, it's okay because one x has one y, one x has one y. I got one input, I got one output, exactly. No doubt on that. If you do this, it's a different story. Here's x anymore, Here, here's x, here's y. One x has, if you have like, a, it's a periodic sine wave, you have like a million y's. It's not a function. So can you do this? Saying like, oh, I know a, I know a. Assuming I know this a as well, so a cosine theta equals a, so I know that cosine theta equals a over a, so theta equals arc cosine a, a to a. Is that correct? No, it's not a function. It doesn't have an inverse function. It doesn't work, same to, same to sine as well, it doesn't work. That's why from here to here, you need some other techniques to do it. So I'm just trying to summarize everything in one place. Let me start with a new paper, because it's super important. You'll find out this is super fine. It's not really confusing at all, okay? So again, let me repeat this really quick. A, E, J, theta equals, depending on what, Euler's equation It's given, right? It's what? A, cosine theta plus j sine theta. No problem here by far, right? Okay, Euler's equation. From here to a plus bj, here to here, no problem, calculators. From here to here, 
no inverse function. Okay? So cry a little bit for a bit. <laughs> don't but don't give up. How do we convert it back there? So first, you want to find out um, this guy converted to the complex plane. So there's a new concept. It's called complex plane. This is an imaginary, this is a real face, a real plane. And so A plus BJ is what? There's a bar. Um, the bar's length is this. Why? Because A is a real part, B is an imaginary part, so the A is the length here, B is the length here. Do you agree with that? So can I find the angle here? Arc, sine, arc, cosine, no, none of them work because they are not functions. Can I do tangent? Think about the tangent function. So within that, Domain. So this is tangent, right? Tangent theta. It's like this. I think this is pi over two. <laughs> it's from my memory from high school. Anyway, if this is wrong, don't blame me. <laughs> anyway, but the, the shape looks like this. Plus minus two uh, pi over two. Is that is that correct? Anyone still remember this? Okay, so tangent is like this, right? If you flip it, is it still a function? Is one x has one y here or no? One x, mm, one y, one x, one y, one x, one y. I don't have multiple y's, so I'm good. Can I use tan can I use tangent theta to do it? Find find the angle. Yes. So what can you do here? What's tangent theta here? What's tangent theta? Mm -mm. B over A. Tangent theta is this divided by this. Oh, is this new to you? Is this new to you guys? No, not really, right? Where 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 this got covered? High school or physics? High school? High school? Okay. Yeah. That's tough. <laughs> How many years? It's been four years, right? Anyway, so tangent theta is this divided by this. Keep that in mind. So I'm teaching you again here. So what's theta? It's the inverse function of tangent theta, right? This is arc. Tan what? Now let's come back here. Here to here. How do you do it? Thing is how to find out theta, right? Yeah. Okay. A equals what? Because here, a squared plus b squared is amplitude is length. So how do you convert here to here? Here to here, how do you do it?
over here to here. Mm -mm. <laughs> okay. Can I just start as this one and directly find out this? Mm. I can't. You just have to do this. Make sense? How? A is given, right? From here to here means A is given. A is given. Sita is given as well. Can you do this? Yeah. Just A, cosine sita, calculators. A sine sita, calculators. Done. Okay? If this is given, going back, how? This. This. Plug in. Done. All right, let me see uh, is there's is there anything else that I didn't, oh, one, one more thing. So this one sometimes being written as, amplitude and angle, it's the same stuff. Okay? And also these don't have the time these are all being discussed in the frequency domain. No time. Did you see T somewhere? No T. So it's the frequency domain. So the time domain is, is uh, ignored over here. So we are assuming they all have the same frequency. But sometimes we need a standard uh, reference. Why we need a reference? Because if we look at this, we, we as a convention, we use cosine theta as a reference as a starting time, as a starting bar. The thing is, they all look the same. It's a periodic signal, depending on where you set it as a time zero. It's so always look the same. Same, <laughs> very similar signal everywhere, right? So we just set the as reference signal as cosine theta, as cosine omega t. Um, let me write it down here so it's making more sense. Um, so this guy, A, E, J, theta, there's no time, right? There's no time. But we write, we use a reference sine wave or cosine wave signal, which is written as this. It's getting a T here. This doesn't have a T, doesn't matter. They are not equal, but this is representing this guy. So you can see all different frequencies in the homework problems, in anywhere, in all the examples. However, if you just want to look at amplitude and frequency, or amplitude and phase, you don't look at the time, don't look at the time to me. So it doesn't matter if it's like 2,000 here, or 1,000, 8,000, you just don't look at it. But eventually when they ask you to calculate the uh, period, you start calculating it. Otherwise, if this is given, and they already tell you this, you can directly write it down from here to here. You can directly convert from here to here. So this theta is exactly this theta. This one's given, this is given. There's no way that you're looking at this, you know the frequency. No way, no, it's just a phase. Just an angle. What does angle mean? Degrees compared to where? Compared to the x-axis. So what is the x-axis? See, look at the theta here. If the bar starts from here, if the bar is starting from here, you got no angle at the very beginning. It's just perfect cosine wave. If you start from here, what's gonna happen? Let's draw it. Um, if you start from, <coughs> if you start from here to swing, Right? You are getting a cosine, perfect cosine wave. If you start from here, what's, what is your starting cosine amplitude? It's definitely not, a, not one anymore. Here's one, right? It's not one anymore. So starting from where? Uh, from where? So one, one starts here, right, instead. So it's like this. 
<coughs> okay, that's called time delay. So there's a time delay or phase shift. So how much phase is over here? This is theta. Theta here. How do you convert to time from angle? So how much angle do you have for the whole circle? So theta over 260 is what? This is T domain, right? If this is delta T, if the whole period is a period called T, can you calculate uh, this delta T? Theta is the delta theta, right? The delta theta here. And there's a corresponding delta t in the time domain. So the ratio of this delta t in the whole period, which is one circle, one period, the same as the ratio of the delta theta in the whole 360 degrees. You have to use this a lot in all different places. Any questions on this? Depending on which is given, right? If this is given, you can call it this. If this is given, you can call it this. So if if it's telling you that, hey, there's a five minute second phase shift. All the terms. Is the large T a constant number? Or is it it's a constant number of the period, the period of the sound wave. Or cosine wave, doesn't matter, depending on where you look at it. How do we find the period? One over the frequency is the period, right? Have you heard about frequency somewhere? Frequency somewhere? Not yet. Well, it's just a lot of things to cover. A lot of things to cover. If say, if I, for example, there's a question. Given that there's a five minute second time shift and the uh, phase shift or time shift. And there's a, so the period, period T is 100 milliseconds. How much angle, how, uh, how much angle, delta angle is uh, for the signal compared to the reference here? How to calculate it? Five milliseconds divided by the whole period equals what? The delta theta is asking to calculate over what? 360, done. So this is one of the one of the types, uh, very typical type of problem. <laughs> you can calculate back and forth. That's how you project all the time shift, time domain to the angle, to the phaser domain. It's called phaser, you know, it's a concept. Don't want to introduce too many new terms, but it's called phaser. So what is a phaser? It's basically just a bar, okay? It's getting complicated. Sometimes the phaser looks like <clears throat> You know, sometimes it looks like this. A plus BJ, is this a phaser? It is. Why? Because it defines the bar here. Does it define the bar? It is. You need everything here. You, you have everything here to define the bar. Why? Because the length, which is amplitude, A squared plus B squared. You need the angle? Yes, arc, tangent, B over A. You have everything. Is this the phaser? Yes. Same stuff. Why? This equals what? Euler's equation. Okay? And you have what? To make this happen? A calculator. Same stuff. Calculator. Done. Is this the phaser? Yes. Is the phaser? Yes. Make sense? Okay. Let's do our in class exercise. So, again, okay, I'm gonna delay the deadline for tutorial nine, homework nine, since I just find out there's so many other things to cover. You need to know this, have every, everything crystal clear in your mind before keep, uh, feel comfortable to move forward. And one really quick thing for the exercise. So, <clears throat> um, 
you know that for something like this stay there for 100 years this becomes what a wire so it's, this is getting shorted right you know that another thing if there's a switch getting closed at t0 there's an initial current. Can I assume initial current in the inductor? Yes, I can. I just didn't show the other circuits, but I can tell you there, before the switch getting closed, there's an initial current running in, in it. So you use natural response, which is I L zero times E to the minus T over the time constant. You can find out I L T. I just want to make it super clear for you guys. So when you close the switch, what's going to happen? It's going to discharge discharge. So the reference current is in here. It discharges. What's the equivalent resistance over here? What's R here? What is R here? Discharges. What is R? Uh, parallel resistance. R1 in parallel with R2. Okay? Yeah, it may bore some of you guys, but I believe at least the 50% of you guys are not getting this, uh, are not very familiar with this, but it's good to exercise over here because it's basically one of the problems in the exam too. Let's do it. I'll see how you guys um, are doing this guy. And eventually I'll just adjust my teaching materials later, okay? So when you are done, I'll show you later. But let's just get into it for now. I think I've heard it a lot more. Just pass it. Turn in, do this, okay? Do this. Fold it, fold it, and put your name on the top. Do this. in mind, do this, fold it like this way, okay? Because I know students will mm, do this and put name here. Sometimes they put name at the bottom. Do it exactly like this. It's make my grading life easier, okay? And I can show you this just for reference. 